morning. Welcome to worship from the Southwark and Deptford Circuit on this 24th day of January, this third Sunday in Ordinary Time, and during the week of prayer for Christian unity. As we gather before God, let us pray. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Living in your presence, we have nothing to fear. Open our hearts to your word this day. As we hear the story of the call of the first disciples, help us to be ready to follow Jesus on whatever path he leads us. Cast aside our fears and doubts and teach us to trust wholly in you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
let us pray. Lord God, despite the restrictions placed upon us and the circumstances in which we are living in these days, we are thankful that we can turn our eyes upon you to praise and worship you, the living God. Do I comfort in the knowledge of your gracious and compassionate nature? We are conscious, Lord, of those who have not been able to meet with others, concerned perhaps not to be in other people's company because of reasons of safety and health. We think of them now. Think of them sitting where they normally would be on a Sunday in church. We ask you, Lord, to bless them. Just where they are now, uniting us together through the love of Christ. Amen. We continue in prayer as we make our confessions to God. Gracious God, you offer us new life in Christ. Yet so often we try to live in our own way and in our own strength. We stray from the paths you want us to follow. Forgive us, Lord, for our half-hearted efforts, our self-centeredness, and our selfish prayers. Challenge our minds and hearts and lead us towards your truth. Hear the good news. For all who put their trust in Christ, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. For our young people this morning, I'm going to talk about Jonah. Our theme is we can't hide from God. I want to ask our young people whether they've heard about the man called Jonah. If you have, I want you to do something for me. I want you to give me a thumbs up and I want you to do something better. I want you to give a high five to your sister, to your brother, to your mom, to your dad, to your auntie or to your uncle, whoever you are watching this service with. And I want you to call that high five, high five, Jonah. So you say, high five, Jonah. But there are some of you who have forgotten the story of Jonah. Or some of you who have never heard about the story of Jonah. I want you to tell you this story. So Jonah was a prophet of God. And Jonah used to listen to what God says. And then go and tell the people that this is what God has said. So one day God said to Jonah, I want you to go to a city called Nineveh and tell the people who live in that city that they are a very wicked people and they need to change their behavior. They need to change the way they do things. They need to change the way they live. But Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. Maybe Jonah did not like the people of Nineveh or maybe he was afraid of the people of Nineveh. So Jonah decided to run away and hide from God. So what did Jonah do? Jonah took the first ship out of town and headed the opposite direction from where God wanted him to go. But that day, Jonah learned a very important lesson. He learned that you might run away from God, but you can't hide from God. So Jonah got into the ship and went down, down, down the ship and hide himself there. Surely he said to himself, God won't find me here. So he thought. So what did God do? God sent this big storm. You can imagine the big storm. It started tossing the boat and tossing the boat 
and the sailors thought we were going to die they were going to die or they were going to drown so they started to find out what they can do so they found Jonah on the boat at the bottom of the ship and they asked him who are you and what are you doing here so Jonah answered I am a worshiper of the God of heaven who made the land and the sea. So Jonah told the sailors that he was running away from God because he did not want to go to Nineveh as God has told him to do. So when the sailors learned about Jonah's story, that he was running away and was afraid, they were more afraid than ever. So they asked Jonah, what should we do to stop this terrible storm? So Jonah said to them, throw me overboard into the sea and the sea will be calm. So the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the storm stopped at once. So did Jonah drown in the sea? No, he didn't. God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah and inside, and he was inside the fish for three days and three nights. So spending three days and three nights into this inside of this big ship gave Jonah plenty of time to think. So he prayed inside the ship to the Lord. He confessed that he had done, he has been wrong by running away from God and promised to fulfill what God had sent him to do. God caused the fish to spit Jonah onto the shore. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah again and said, Go up, get up and go to Nineveh and deliver the message that I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh. Just as God had uh, something for Jonah to do, he has plenty of plans for you and for me. I hope that we will learn a lesson from Jonah. When it comes to doing what God wants us to do, we might run, but we cannot hide from God. So when your parents ask you to do something, you can't run away or hide from them because you want to go back home again. So this is a lesson that we are learning. We can't, we can run away from God, but we can't hide from him. So let us pray. God, we know we, can we can't hide from you. You know what we do. You know what we think. Give us strength and courage to do all the things that you want us to do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning, Church. Our scriptural readings today continue last week's theme of God calling people. From the Old Testament, we have the word of God calling Jonah for the second time. The first time it didn't go so well. But when Jonah is obedient to God, what must be the shortest sermon in the Bible has the most remarkable result. This is followed by the gospel story. As the fishermen, Simon, Andrew, James and John are called to follow Jesus and fish for
for people instead. Our scripture reading is taken from Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 following on with verse 10. Let us listen to the word of God. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. Verse 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. That ends the reading. Praise be to God. Amen. Gospel reading for today is from Mark 1, 14 to 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. 
As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the reading. The poet John Batman describes in his verse autobiography how his father put pressure on him to follow him into the family business. The young John did, had no desire to do so. He wanted to become a poet. The father said, that is a stupid uh, dream. You have to join the family business, not only to make money, but also to, for the family honor. You are the fourth generation. You have to carry the business. The young man refused and followed his own vocation, ending up as a poet laureate uh, with a memorial in Westminster Abbey. As we read the Gospel of Mark, we have no idea how many generations of Zebedee family had been fishing on the Sea of Galilee, but it is quite clearly that there were more than four. In, the, in that country and culture, and in many countries and cultures today, a family business can be handed on not only through generations, but also through centuries. The opening clause in Mark chapter 1 verse 16 presents Jesus as itinerant as he passed along and called uh, these fishermen to follow him on the road. This is more than just a challenge to leave behind income and stability, or as we might put it, to get out of our comfort zone. Mark's account here in this incident records a detail lacking in other incident, in other accounts, namely that James and John leave their father Zebedee with a hired man. Mark 1.20 Not just nets are left behind, but also the father, a named father, a bot, and indeed the whole empire. They themselves were not hired men or day laborers, but rather a part of what was probably a successful uh, family business. For these disciples to follow Jesus, they have to demonstrate a willingness to allow their identity, to allow their status, to allow their worth, to primarily be determined in their relationship to Jesus. Fishing was a major industry in Galilee with a connected sub-industry of fish salting. In a time of social turbulence, these two uh, related industries could support one another and remain steady. The willingness of the disciples to forsake such stability is quite remarkable. Economic stability is no longer their chief purpose for working. Yet, even there and today, here, we must be cautious that Jesus does not reject the earthly vocations of these men, but just reorientate them. Jesus calls Simon and Andrew to be fishers of people. Mark 1 verse 17, thereby affirming their former work as an image 
of their new role to which he was calling them. Although most Christians are not are called to leave their jobs to become wandering preachers, we are called to ground our identity in Jesus Christ. Whether we leave our jobs or not, a disciple's identity is no longer a fisherman, is no longer a tax collector, is no longer a doctor, is no longer an engineer, is no longer an architect, is no longer a nurse, is no longer a social worker, or any other professional or expertise that you can think of, but the follower of Jesus Christ. Our identity becomes that we are all followers of Jesus Christ. This challenges us to resist the temptation to make our work the determining element of our sense of who we are. Jesus calls ordinary people. The first people Jesus calls were fishermen, common men working a common trade. Historians say that the average uh, of about 300 fishing boats could be on the waters at one given time or day on the Sea of Galilee, which was about, which is about 65 square miles large. There could be many, many fishermen there, out there that day. But Jesus only handpicked only four of them. Jesus does not pick disciples because they are exceptional. Jesus does not pick disciples because they are extraordinary. But that he, Jesus, is the exceptional one. That he, Jesus, is the extraordinary one. We do not have to be awesome to be called. I remember when I first sensed a pressure for ministry in the United Kingdom. I didn't consider myself to be that person who would preach in the United Kingdom Church. But this Bible text from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 has been an encouragement and a source of strength over the years. For consider your calling. Not many were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. And even that, and even things that are not, to bring things, to bring to nothing things that are, so that human beings might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that it is written, let the one who post, post in the Lord. We do not have to be wise. We do not have to be powerful. We do not have to come from a noble family to follow Jesus. We only have to hear his call 
and respond. To hear his call in any kind of mission. To hear his call in any kind of ministry. To hear his call in your sphere of influence. How often do we resist the claim on our lives to become what he is calling us to do? That sometimes seems crazy and sometimes seems impossible. How often do we avoid putting out the, into deep waters and take risks of following and bearing witness as Jesus' disciples? Because Jesus, because we are convinced that we may not see results. So we don't want to take risk. We don't want to get out of our comfort zones. What might it mean for us if we go into the deep sea fishing with Jesus to trust and to follow him outside of our comfort zones, to let go of our convictions, to have our lives radically reorientated. For most of us, this will mean leaving our current professionals. And some, it may not mean that. We all are called in whatever situation we are in by the virtue of our baptism to participate in God's mission to the world in Christ Jesus. We are all called daily to reorient our priorities and to align them with God's priorities. To use the gifts God has given us in service to others. To share the good news of Christ in word and deed. Jesus' mission does not wait until we think that we are ready. The need for the gospel in this broken world is far too urgent. We are called right now. Even in spite of our frailty, even in spite of our failures, even in spite of our doubts, even in spite of COVID-19 pandemic, even in the midst of our ordinariness, in the midst of our busyness, in the midst of our complicated lives, Jesus' word to Simon Peter is also a word for us today. Do not be afraid. This is Jesus' mission. And we trust that he will keep working with us and through us, catching others as he caught us in the deep and wide net of God's mercy and love. We trust finally that that catch is in God's hands and that God's desires desire is for the net to be overflowing and the boat to be jam-packed. This is what Peter, Andrew, James, and John did. And it is what all Christians are called to do today, tomorrow, and on into God's future. Will you come and follow me if but I call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown? 
in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if but I call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile snare? Should your life attract a snare? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you in me? Will you let the blind see if but I call your name? Will you let the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean? Will you do such as this unseen? And admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the one you hide? Will you love the you you hide? If but I call your name. Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you see the faith you have will you use the faith you have found and reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me I hope we can all say it together Lord your summons echo true when but you call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. If you're in your company, I will go where your love and footsteps show. That I will move and live and grow in you and you in me. To God be the glory great things he has done. Amen.
prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. Lord, you have come to the seashore, neither searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should follow. Lord God, the words from this lovely hymn paint pictures of hard-working people going about their daily tasks when they are confronted by Jesus. This same Jesus, who long ago called to those first disciples, calls to us each today. Our seizures are different. They are the places where we walk and where we live. Yet, in this song, Jesus is coming for each one of us just as we are, and inviting us to follow him humbly. In silence, we lift up the names of loved ones today in prayerful petition for God's healing love. We utter in our hearts names and situations that it would break our hearts to speak. We know, Lord, that you hear our cries and respond in love. This is one of the faithful works of the church, the work of prayer. Asking for your healing mercy and blessings in this week of prayer for the Christian unity, Jesus, we acknowledge you to be the one true leader of every church. We choose to stand as one church, your church, and to lift our focus from our differences and divides. We will live our own ways and follow you together. Support each other as we seek to be your disciples and work together to focus on fishing once more. Lord Jesus, we ask for your Spirit's help with this. For we are quick to focus on ourselves, our labels, and our differences rather than the same nets in our hands, and the same leader before us. Christ, have mercy. In your precious name, which unites us all. Amen. Let us all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Jesus.
Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Lord, be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if you are by my side. No. sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear, my foes are ever near me, around me and within, oh Jesus, now draw nearer, and shield my soul from sin, oh let me hear you speaking, in accents clear and still, Above the storms of passion, the moments of self-will, oh speak to me, assure me, to hasten or control, Lord, speak and make me listen, O oh, guardian of my soul. Oh Jesus, you have promised to all who follow you. Where you are in glory, your servant shall be too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you to each person who helped contribute in some way to this morning's worship service. As the disciples walked with Christ so long ago, walk with Christ in your hearts and spirits. Feel the power of the Holy Spirit guiding your path. Know the love of God which is poured out for you, and rejoice. Go in peace. And may God's peace go with you. Amen.